Good morning. Good morning. The Lord be with you. As we gather to worship this day, we invite you to greet those around you with the peace of the Lord.
151, Divine Service Setting 1. As you're able, please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us.
pray. Oh God, the giver of all that is good, by your holy inspiration grant that we may think those things that are right and by your merciful guiding accomplish that through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The first reading for this sixth Sunday of Easter comes from the book of Acts in the 16th chapter. These are words which will serve as our sermon text for this morning as well. A vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia was standing there urging him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. And when Paul had seen the vision, Immediately we sought to go on into Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. So, setting sail from Troas, we made a direct voyage to Samothrace, and the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city some days, and on the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate to the riverside, where we supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the women who had come together. One who heard us was a woman named Lydia, from the city of Thyatira, a seller of purple goods, who was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what was said by Paul, and after she was baptized and her household as well, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. And she prevailed upon us. This is the word of the Lord. We're pleased today to have with us again Rob and Paula Lutz, and we invite them to uh, share some special music with us at this time.
indeed have a friend so faithful. He speaks to us now in the words of our epistle from Revelation chapter 21, giving to us a glimpse of heaven. Then came one of the seven angels, who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues, and spoke to me, saying, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, its radiance like a most rare jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and on the gates the names of the twelve tribes of the sons of Israel were inscribed. On the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. And on the west, three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations. And on them were the twelve names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls, each of the gates made with a single pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold, transparent as glass. And I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and its lamp is the Lamb. By its light will the nations walk, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it, and its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. They will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations, and nothing unclean will ever enter it, nor anyone who does what is detestable or false, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the Holy Gospel as we sing the Alleluia Mirrors. <laughs>
mercy and peace to each one of you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text from Acts 16, our theme, Opened Hearts. Usually they're too polite to say so, but there are certain people when I call and they know it's me on the phone, I'm sure that what's going through their head is, what does he want now? <laughs> You're laughing, it must go through your heads, huh? Yeah, and uh, maybe there's uh, times that, that you're calling somebody. Hey, can you come on over and give me a hand? Can you help me with this? You have your go-to people that you ask to come and help. Maybe there's other people who are the ones calling you, saying, hey, can you come on over and, and help me with this? I need a hand. Yeah, and that's okay. God put us into this world not to live separate, isolated lives, but to be in community, to help one another, to, to love our neighbor, because God loves us and we love him. In our text today, in Acts, we see an example of someone saying, hey, come on over and help. We're going to look at our text in, in three parts, uh, kind of just working through the story of our text. And, and uh, the first part is indeed that very phrase, come on over and help. Paul sees a vision. It's a man of Macedonia saying, come over and help us. Macedonia, that's a new area. That's Greece. That's Europe. Paul, he's been in the Middle East, up as far as Asia Minor, Turkey, but, but not into that north country of Europe. Paul's been trying to go certain places, but the Holy Spirit's been blocking him and saying, no, don't go there, don't go here. And now this vision, Macedonia, Paul, come over here, help us. And so our text says, we concluded that God had called us to preach the gospel there, to preach the gospel in Europe, and so they go. We concluded God had called us. It's from this part of the book of Acts where, where we have the we and the us. Most likely Luke, the author of Acts, is now with Paul. Sometimes it's third person, he and they, but, but here it's first person. Uh, Luke is part of this part of Paul's missionary journeys. And so they go. By the fastest means possible, jump in a boat, jump on a ship, sail across the Mediterranean, get to Greece, to Neapolis, head on up to Philippi. It was the fastest way to go. Philippi, a major city on the Ignatius Way, Lots of people going through a Roman colony. Lots of important people there. And so Paul goes to this central town in Macedonia to come and help. Paul answered the call. And he and Luke and the others, they brought the help that was most helpful. They brought the gospel there. To Europe. Come over and help us. It certainly, though, is not the first time in the Bible that someone has needed help. It's not the first time in the Bible that someone comes to help, that someone is called to come and help. In fact, the first time, you'd have to go back way to Genesis. Genesis 3. Who needed help? It was Adam and Eve in the garden. Adam and Eve didn't even know they needed help. They were hiding, running away, afraid. But God the Father knows. He comes. He finds them. He gives to them the promise that someone one day is going to come and help 
that someone someday, a seed of the woman, will be called to come to be their savior. That helper is Jesus. He's the ultimate come and help. He came to save them. He comes to save us. Even when when Adam and Eve, even when we ourselves are dead in our sin, cannot call for help, the Father calls his Son to come and help us. Even when we don't know what we need, the Father has come and sends Jesus, sends the gospel. The people of Macedonia, they didn't know what they were missing out on, but God sends this vision to Paul. That they would go, that they would come, that they would help. Secondly, our text speaks about opened hearts. Paul and Luke and the rest, they're in Philippi. They're there a few days. The Sabbath comes, Saturday. Evidently, Philippi doesn't have enough Jews to have its own synagogue. And so they go to the river, which is where the Jews would often meet when there was just a few. Meet by the river, water for the ceremonial cleansing. It was the recognized common place to go. And so Paul, in his journeys, would often seek out the river if there was no synagogue, no place with Jews, and sit down and talk to the people there. And so they go, they go to the river on the Sabbath, and there's some women there, and they start talking with them. They talk about Jesus, the help that he is, who he is, that he's the Savior of the world, the promised Messiah. And our text says there's a woman there named Lydia. Lydia is there from the city of Thyatira, a seller of purple goods and a worshiper of God. Someone who evidently had heard about the Old Testament, heard about God's promises, maybe even hoping one day for a savior, the Messiah, but not knowing that he had come. She was an important woman, a woman of some means and wealth. Purple goods were expensive. Thyatira was a place where those goods were produced. She had connections there. She brought those goods here to Philippi. People of means able to afford such things. She had a good business. But here's what's important. The last half of verse 14, our text says, The Lord opened her heart. The Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what was said by Paul. The truth is, for her and for us, there's lots of words. A lot of them go over our heads or they go in one ear and out the other. We don't hang on to them. We don't keep them. But the Lord opened Lydia's heart to pay attention to what was being said by Paul to pay attention, to hear, to keep, to believe Jesus, the Messiah. Every time someone believes, it's not because they open their heart. No, it's because God opened their heart. It's a passive thing. God comes to this heart and opens it wide, opens it to the word of God, opens it to the gift of faith. As Luther reminds us, we confess that we believe that we cannot by our own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ or Lord or come to him, but it's the Holy Spirit who opens our heart calls us with the gospel, gives us the gift of faith. It's true for Lydia. It's true for us. It's true for every single person in the world. God opening hearts. He opened your heart in the waters of baptism. 
or through the hearing of the word. Your heart was open. Faith was created. Faith was given, placed in you, placed in your heart. God's doing the work of the Spirit. God coming into you, into your heart. It was true for Lydia at Philippi in Greece, Macedonia, Europe. It's true for you here this morning in Parker's Prairie, Minnesota, in America. The Holy Spirit coming to do his work. That's what God does. He opens hearts for faith. Lydia becomes evidently, most likely, the first European believer. The first person on the continent of Europe to hear the gospel, to believe, to be saved. The first missionary visit to this continent. The gift of faith that would spread from that first person, Lydia, across the continent. Paul continued to go and travel in Luke to preach the word. The word spread from area to area across the days, the months, the years, the centuries, all the way to our forefathers, starting here with Lydia and an opened heart, that God might also be the one who has opened your heart and given to you the gift of faith. That's how it works here and every place in the world. And thirdly and finally this morning, we look also briefly at the end of our text. What happens after Lydia comes to faith? It's interesting, our text doesn't give us the Sermon of Paul. Luke sometimes does that, but he doesn't give us the Sermon of Paul. All that he says doesn't say anything that Lydia might have said at the moment that she believed, but it tells us what she said afterwards. You can tell she was a wise woman, knew how to get her way. She says to Paul, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. What could Paul do? If he left, he'd be saying, no, you don't have the true faith. No, you're not one of us. She had no, Paul had no choice in his companions but to stay. She prevailed upon them, Luke says. She prevailed. They came, they stayed. She was a wise woman. She wanted to hear more, to learn more. How better than when Paul and the others were there in her very own home. She could visit more, hear the word, be fed, grow in that faith and understanding. Faith, her faith was active. Active in serving Paul and the others. Active in learning wanting more of the word. That's how faith is. And my friends, it's the same for all of us. Our hearts have been opened, given faith. And now what? What's next? Who can we serve? Who can we urge? How can we help? Who is saying to us, come over and help? Someone is. Know that. Someone is saying, come and help. Or even if they're unbelief, they can't say, come and help. God is saying to you, come and help. It's always the case. The fields are white for harvest. 
God has a plan and a purpose for you. Whether you're five or 50 or 95, he has a plan and a purpose. God has opened your heart for faith, and now he opens your heart to your neighbor and to their needs, whether that neighbor is near or halfway around the world. God is saying, come, come and help. Maybe it's the voice of the children who will be coming to VBS, who are saying to your heart, come and help us. Come and be a teacher. Come and be a leader. Maybe it's the voice of the children of this community who need to be invited to Bible school, saying to you, come and invite me. Come and tell me about this opportunity. Maybe it's a child in an orphanage who needs a sponsor who's saying, come, come and help, come and sponsor me. Maybe it's someone who needs a prayer partner or someone who needs a ride to church saying, come, help. Someone who needs a friendly visit. Come and help. Maybe it's those impacted by disasters saying, come, give a gift, provide the resources, come over and help us. It's how God works. He puts things on your heart and your mind. It's different for every one of us because every one of us have different gifts, different roles, different parts of the body of Christ that we are. But know this, you are needed. Know this, the Holy Spirit calls you. Yes, what a privilege that the God of the universe wants you, wants your help, wants you to be an instrument in his kingdom. Come over and help us. That was the cry that Jesus heard from heaven. The voice of his father saying, come and help. Come and save. Jesus came down here to help us, to save us, to rescue us from sin and death and damnation. And that same Jesus now calls us to have received the gift of faith. My friends, who is Jesus calling you to help? If you don't know this instant, just keep thinking on that because he will, even this week, reveal to you the way that he would have you to help. That's our God who has helped us in the most incredible way that we might love him and love our neighbor by helping those in need. And that, my friends, is the way that it is this sixth week of Easter, the year of our Lord, 2019. In Jesus' name, amen. In response to our God and his word to us this morning, we confess our faith in him. Page 159, the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please rise. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
be seated. We bring now our um, tithes and offerings to the Lord. I also ask that you would sign the friendship register. There's a red folder in your pew. If you'd sign it, pass it to those next to you. prayers this morning we include Cheryl Fredenberg who had a successful surgery and is uh, waiting some tests and still hospitalized. Uh, we uh, give thanks for Mike Klimek who had a successful surgery this past week uh, to remove rods and insert uh, new ones in his back and we pray uh, continued healing for him. Uh, for Roy Olson who left Canute, uh, for uh, Roy Kramer who uh, left St. Williams to go back home, uh, for uh, Lori McDermott who uh, was transferred to uh, Knut Nelson, and to uh, we pray for all people um, according to their needs. We rise for prayer. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, you call us to pray. Your Son Jesus promises that you know our needs that he need not even relay our messages to you, but that you love us and are inclined to hear and to answer our prayers, to provide for our every need. We pray, O oh Lord, this day that you would give us hearts and minds and ears 
to hear the calling that you give to us, to hear the voices who are praying and asking for us to come and help, that you would show us what gifts and talents you have given us that we might use in your kingdom. Give us hearts to hear and a willingness to follow, to be your people, to help and to love those in need. Lord, in your mercy, Almighty God, we give you thanks for this vision of heaven given by to St. John. We look forward to that day when you will call us home. We thank you for the worship that is there, for the privilege of worshiping you here and now on this earth. Fill our hearts always with the gift of faith and love and trust in you. Lord, in your mercy, Lord Jesus, as you invite and encourage us to pray, to promise, to hear, to answer, so we commend to you all of those in any need. We pray for your healing hand to rest upon Cheryl, Roy, Bernice, Norman, upon Mike, Linda, James, Virginia, Colleen, and Lori, upon Jerry and Corey, Levi and Roy, Kimberly and Tim, Nettie, Cynthia, John, Evelyn, Mary, Bonnie, and those we name now in our hearts. Surround them, O Lord, with your love. Touch them with your healing power. Hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for Werner and the 80 years of life that you have given to him and pray for your blessing upon him and upon all who celebrate special days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our Almighty God, we pray for and give thanks for this day those who serve in the armed forces, those who serve to protect us. We thank you, Lord, and pray for your blessing upon Kyle as he soon retires from military service and for his long career in serving our country. We pray for Josephine in Poland that you would give her safety and courage. We pray for CJ and Theo and Zach that your hand of blessing would be upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Almighty God, on this memorial weekend, we remember also those who gave their lives serving our country. We thank you for their dedication Thank you for their sacrifice. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Almighty God, we give you thanks for places of mercy, places of hope and help, teaching and education. Especially we give you thanks this day for House of Hope Orphanage. Pray, O oh Lord, that you would continue to bless this place. We thank you for its opening. We thank you for the children who are there. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would bless this ministry, that you would bless each child, that they might hear your word, that they might grow in faith and love for you. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace.
morning to those who are visitors. Good to have each of you here. I pray God's blessings upon you this coming week. Everyone's invited downstairs for coffee. There's some uh, good-looking treats down there, so please come and join us for that. And then following that, uh, we're looking forward uh, to a mis mission presentation uh, that uh, Rob is going to share. And, and uh, good to have him and Paula here. Thank you for the music this morning. And uh, Arlo as well for your music. Appreciate that. Uh, so I encourage you to come and, and stay uh, for the presentation and learn more about uh, the orphanage that was still a work in progress uh, last year when uh, Rob uh, visited with us and look forward to, to the update of how things are going and ways we can be involved. On the calendar this week, on Thursday evening, we celebrate the 40th day of Easter, the Ascension of our Lord, a special service at Zion in Alexandria at 6.30 uh, p.m. Encourage you to come if you are able to for that service. Um, next weekend, we'll be uh, recognizing our high school graduates. Also, we'll be having our uh, quarterly uh, special needs offering uh, next weekend. Pray the Lord be with all of you and keep you in His care this coming week. 